which was you know one of the city's initial um, streetscape improvements back in the 70s and it really sort of shows sort of what you can do to make a street a livable street. What we basically did was make space, was to take space away from automobiles and give it to the street and to people living on the street. So they took a big street like this and they went like this. And so only two lanes in each direction. Every time it curved in, they put a little mini park. It invites you to sit here and spend time uh, and, and linger in a space and, it, and by doing so it creates an active space, it creates a sense of safety and visibility. Just recently um, we had a burglary right next door here. Um, guy who is always selling flowers across the street noticed somebody who came out of the apartment who didn't belong there. It was just somebody he knew was not friendly with Kimber and he stopped them and asked them questions and um, and realized that, you know, it was somebody who wasn't supposed to be there. Long story short, guy called the police, the police came, and they were able to apprehend these people who had broken into this apartment. By widening the sidewalks, bulldogs at the intersection, you narrow the roadway, and in doing so, you slow down cars, uh, you provide sort of less sort of space for people to sort of drive erratically, you sort of really rationalize uh, traffic patterns, which at the end of the day, it makes the street safer, makes the street more comfortable as a pedestrian and as a bike, bicyclist. A critical part of this street is that it has mid-blocks, mid-block crossing. So it's actually broken up into a series of very small blocks. And it's, it's within those little segments of the street that you really create the human scale. Um, the exception to that, and you can see quickly by contrast, is the last block of Noe Street between 14th and the park, which does not have a mid-block crossing. It's the street I have, portion I happen to live on. It's a long street, and so the tendency is for cars to go faster because they've got, you know, some asphalt that they can, they can cover. So you see a different kind of, of uh, environment for pedestrians on that long block versus the short blocks where there's all these things happening and next thing you know you're at a corner. I mean, the fact that, that the cars are parking at 90 degrees, I think, forces everybody to slow down. People would be tearing through here if there just wasn't this kind of parking feature here. Most of those houses were built by small developers. You may not know it, but your eye is arrested by the vertical line. So it's a that, 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 that. It's the beginnings of a good environment. When there are so many owners, also, as there are here, when there are so many owners, they have a stake. The government can and should do a lot. Uh, and it can take things and do basics. It can show you how you can make this a fine street, a, public, a fine public right-of-way. The government should have expertise in knowing how to do that and in working with people to do it. Uh, then there is the added step that goes so way beyond. If you do it right, you invite people to do something. A lot of times, more often than not, that just doesn't happen. I think streets like this are um, in some ways born organically. If there were a formula, everybody would do it, you know. I think it has to be the right people, the right location, and the, the right design. The bare bones that people can then come along and organically improve on. Often, the design, as designers would look at it, is sloppy. This is sloppy. It's great. It's great. And this was my first attempt right here. You can see over here, there's... Um, I sort of used a common, this was actually supposed to be a fountain, and I just bought the base of it, drilled holes in it so that the water would go through, and I put plants. This is actually a piece of prehistoric redwood, which is now petrified. Amazing dinosaurs used to be around at the same time. And then I combined that with some of the redwood, and I just used my own aesthetic taste, and I turned this into a little mini park. I started by building this and using my own ideas. And at first I was a bit possessive. And then I realized the only way to really let it take hold is to let it go. 
And when I let it go and people started doing their own plants and stuff. When I was here 28 years ago, when I came here, you didn't see babies, you didn't see you know, tour buses, you didn't see all of this, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's here. Uh, it's become tremendously gentrified over the last 20 years. This was mostly a black and Latino working class neighborhood uh, up until about the late 70s, early 80s. The shift of that was stimulated in many respects by the investments in all of these pedestrian improvements that we now all, in, all enjoy. And over the course of years, as the economic status of people moving into the neighborhood keeps rising and rising by this gentrification process, uh, I just happen to see fewer people are really hanging out on Noe Street. I guess my personal take is that, that streetscape improvements are not the problem uh, as it relates to sort of affordability and, and housing availability. Those are really macro issues that, 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 that stem out of sort of national and, and state policies that really the streetscape, it's not fair to lump, lump that in with sort of streetscape improvements. I think that everyone in this city is deserving of a quality environment. There's been a renewed focus on what our streets really could, can be, and they really can be more than just a place to, tra to travel from one place to the other. They really, they, they are sort of the front yard of our city. It's, it's how we experience the city that we live in. On Sesame Street, you know, it was just this tree-lined street with characters and, and real people who cared about each other. And I feel like we kind of have that here. I think it's the best street in San Francisco. I love it. I love it, what they've done there. I just absolutely love it. It doesn't get any better than this.